Nope, you guys are good. <laughs> you guys look like you've been working. Alrighty, we'll just give it a minute and then we'll let some people trickle in and we'll get started. Hi folks. Yeah, we'll get started in just a few minutes here. Just let everybody get a chance to uh, wing on by, finish off your lunch we just did. Hey everybody coming in. We're gonna get started real soon here. We're just gonna wait for a couple more people to trickle in and we will get going on giving you guys an update with the 175. Hey Daryl. All right, oh, we've got a nice little group, so whenever you guys are ready, go ahead. All right. All right then, well, afternoon everybody. Welcome to the Steam Rarity Institute here in Owasso, Michigan. I'm Luke, this is Dean. We are coming to you live from our back shop here in Owasso, and this is where we do our maintenance, repairs, and restoration of our, of our historic equipment to help us in fulfilling our mission in educating the public about steam air rarity in Michigan and the Great Lakes region. Of course, the star for that mission is Pier Marquette 1225, which is currently outside. And our feature star, which is right behind us, Chicago Northwestern 460-175. Well, the boiler then. The boiler, which is currently under restoration, a very important component to any steam locomotive. Steve, why is that so important? So, well, it's, so the boiler of a locomotive, the boiler of a locomotive um, provides the power to the locomotive. It, uh, basically, that's where the, the work is done to boil the water to create steam, and the steam pressure drives the cylinders and all the rest of the appliances on the locomotive. It is under pressure, so the boiler needs to be inspected and uh, verified, validated. Uh, at least every 15 years, there's an annual inspection that all steam locomotives go through. So there's also a major rebuilding every 15 years or 1,472 days of operation. Uh, this locomotive that uh, Luke just introduced, CMW 175, it was built in 1908 by American Locomotive uh, Company, Alco. Uh, it last operated in 1957, 1958 up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Uh, it ran uh, for the Chicago and Northwestern around Green Bay and Esk Green Bay, Wisconsin, Escanaba, Michigan, and it really has not run since then. It was purchased for restoration. It was never completed. It never operated in excursion service. And we here picked it up. We here at SRI picked it up in 2018, and it was and moved it down here. So what you see behind us is the shell of the boiler. Um, Normally that would be sitting on top of the uh, running gear, which uh, I think we'll probably pan around to see the cylinders and driving wheels uh, in a little bit. Uh, but normally these two pieces are separated right now. And over the next few years, we're gonna be restoring both halves of the steam locomotive, the boiler, as well as the running gear and the cylinders and driving wheels. So the, what has been done on the boiler so far? I mean, so you can see right here, Sorry, you can see here the different grids, different numbers. You know, these are very components here as part of the inspection as well as the restoration. Right. Yeah. So so far, all so far, most of what's been done has been uh, disassembly or removing some of the parts out of the out of the boiler. Uh, the tubes and flues that were in there have all been removed and disposed of. Uh, that's part of the 1,472-day inspection process where you have to strip the boiler down and do an ultrasonic measurement. The grid lines that Luke pointed out with the chalk numbers there, those are all numbers for uh, an ultrasound thickness measurement. And uh, there's some calculations that our engineering group, our engineering team does 
to verify that the thickness of the sheet metal on the boiler is still sufficient to hold that pressure. Uh, Permarket 1225 operates at 245 pounds per square inch. Uh, this locomotive is less than that. I forgot. Uh, I forgot what the operating pressure is. On I think it's uh, 200. Two, 200. I, I thought it was in, uh, lower. I knew it was lower than 245. Um, but anyway, uh, when you run through all those calculations, there's some minimum thicknesses. So that's been done. The, the ultra, all the ultrasound measurements have been uh, conducted. And uh, again, over the next few years, as we get going on this, we'll be replacing tubes and flues in the boiler. The tubes and flues run from the firebox. Actually, if you can maybe just pan just to the back a little bit. The square piece that you see at the back of the boiler, that would normally be where the cab is located. The cab would be just behind that. And that firebox is where the fire is built. Uh, we burn coal with this locomotive, as does 1225. Um, the burning coal heats up the water that's surrounding the firebox and is also in the, the center part of the boiler. The tubes and flues pass through exhausting heat and exhaust gases up into the smoke box, which is this front section right here uh, by us. The steam collects up at the steam dome up in the top, and then the engineer can release that steam uh, we're using the throttle valves and down through the dry pipe into the cylinders, which uh, operate the running gear. So that's again how the locomotive, how a steam locomotive works, in, in essence. And making sure that the boiler is is, uh, is secure and tight and capable of handling that pressure is a big part of uh, steam locomotive maintenance. We, we, do, we get into a lot of uh, that kind of maintenance. Around here. And that is one of the main reasons why the restoration, especially to this boiler, is very important, especially for the safety of it. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. So, Dean, here's the million dollar question. Yeah. When is it gonna run? <laughs> right now, uh, right now our schedule um, is into late 2024, early 25, uh, depending on when we're able to get started. We're doing some fundraising now. We're applying for different uh, various grants, uh, various foundation and historic preservation grants. And as that money comes in, that'll let us get started with the work. Um, it looks like it's gonna take three and a half to, to almost four years, close to four years, or three and a half to four years once we get going with it. But we're not giving out an exact date, so. Yeah, Sorry, no, we're not putting tickets on sale. No promises, <laughs> yeah, no promises. Right. That's, that's just the kind of rough, rough, rough estimate of the timeline. We'll see how it goes once we get started. Now, here's an easier question. Sure. How can people get involved? Whether it be the restoration of the 175, the maintenance of 1225, or sure. just anything regarding the steam rating institute as a whole. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, so there's lots of ways to get involved. As I said, we, were doing, we are doing some fundraising for the, this locomotive. Uh, you can also come up and volunteer if you want to get involved uh, at the ground level of a steam locomotive uh, restoration. Uh, we do uh, have both paid staff and volunteers here, a number of volunteers, the more the merrier. Uh, we're operating, we operate uh, volunteer days Tuesday through Saturday right now. And so you can just uh, uh, come on up and, and visit us at 405 South Washington Street in Owasso or check our website, michigansteamtrain.com, www.michigansteamtrain, all one word, no spaces, uh, dot com, for volunteer information, membership information, and donation information. So it's all right there. And if you want to get a first-hand look, uh, for those here who are joining us on our live stream, you're gonna be hearing this first, but after a two-week hiatus, we are planning on opening up the Steam Rating Institute again for the public coming this Friday. So Fridays and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., we'll be opening up once again for, for the public for visits and tours. So come on by, swing by, and get a chance to see what it takes to keep steam air running alive, especially in this difficult time that we've been having. So with that, uh, we will take a few questions from, from our audience. Uh, any questions that you have for us, uh, go ahead. We're all here. Yeah, we'll hang out here for a minute. If you guys have any questions, feel free to send them through and uh, then we'll go from there. Well, I guess, um, you know, maybe I can start off with a question here. Uh, you know, since 
you know, since we're talking about the restoration of the 175, mm -hmm. uh, what about, say, the running gear? Because we've also had that in the shop as well. Yes, yeah. Um, we're planning to, um, uh, the wheels haven't been profiled in quite a while. I think we'll be quartering and turning the, turning the wheels. Thickness is still a good, um, um, there are a few missing uh, linkages and uh, a couple of parts that uh, uh, will need to be remanufactured or remachined. Uh, a lot of the bushings, the bearings and bushings, uh, since it's been over 60 years since it operated, uh, we're planning to do, uh, make sure the lubrication system is, is capable of getting uh, lubed to all the drivers and all the different pins and bearings on the running gear. So that'll be a, a, a big part of the job over the next year. We'll probably going to be starting with that. And I take it that we'll also be doing the same with the uh, tender as well? Yes, yeah, we, we do have a tender. The, the tender is not original, it is a Northern Pacific uh, tender, but it, it matches this engine with a few small modifications. It'll uh, need a little bit of, a uh, little bit of patch, a little body work, you know, a little, uh, little, little patching and uh, 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 some, again, some draft gear, running gear, brake system, refurbishment, right. make sure all that. Now, there is one thing here that we don't have for this locomotive that will need to be uh, need to be worked on or pretty much built is the cab. Yes, the, the cab was uh, at some point when it was in storage, there was a a roof collapse during a snowstorm up in the UP, and the, the cab was essentially destroyed at that time. So yeah, the cab will be new construction. Okay. So that's fairly simple. That's just sheet metal. That's fairly simple. Okay. All right, and we have a question from Daryl. He said, what was the overall condition of the 175's boiler when we acquired it? Okay. Yeah, so actually the um, all the ultrasound measurements have uh, turned out very good. Of course, there's some work in the firebox. We knew that. Uh, naturally, there, there's always some work in the firebox to do. Uh, the side sheets will be replaced. Um, the crown sheet uh, thickness looks good. Everything actually looks good with the crown sheet as well as the exterior shell of the boiler. Um, so it's it's turned out uh, very good uh, in, in the early inspection. We haven't found any uh, any surprises. There hasn't been anything we didn't expect. Mostly it's just firebox work. Perfect. As, as you would always expect to do in a locomotive with a roof age. And then uh, Toby asked us, what is the estimated completion date? I know we already went over that, but for anyone joining us just now, can you go ahead and fill us in? Yeah, right now, tentative schedule, we're looking late 2024, early 2025, somewhere in that neighborhood. We'll, we'll see if we can keep on that schedule, depending on how fast the work progresses and what else we have to do. But that, that's what we're looking at right now. Awesome. My advice, just uh, don't expect ticket sales until Steve's coming out of the engine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then Tom asked us on a new update regarding the 1225. Um, so Tom, we are actually gonna be doing a live stream for the 1225 coming up real soon here, um, where we'll, we've got her outside, we'll be showing her off, and the crew will be talking about the, uh, the updates and the, um, the bearing replacements and everything like that. So that live stream will be coming up um, here, I'd say probably in the next couple of weeks. So definitely look out for that. All right, well, that should be it here for our live stream. We want to thank you very much, everybody, for joining us here. And once again, just keep on following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, as well as our website. And once again, thank you very much. See you soon. Thanks.